Now, we're going to hear from architect Tara. She's an expert in strategic scale designs and planning policy and has some more thoughts on building for the future. My name is Tara Valade and I am director and co-founder of Valade Design Studio. As an architect and planner, I get the opportunity to design and create everyday places for people. I get the opportunity to make those places extraordinary. Within the Harlow and Gilson Garden Town, I was the sustainability lead for the project. This is a huge project which involves a partnership of five authorities, including Essex and Hertfordshire County Councils. The project really looked at a master plan scale of over the next 20 years, bringing in over 23,000 new homes and therefore the social infrastructures to support these. Infrastructure really, um, are all the bits that go in between buildings. When we talk about green infrastructure, we're looking at trees, parks, all the things that are not buildings. There's also transport infrastructure. This includes things like roads, pavements, the aspects of society that allow us to get from one place to another. The Harlem and Gilson Garden Town are really innovative in the fact that they have declared a climate emergency. For them, this means that we have to look at sustainability holistically. When I spoke to the planners at first of how we were going to look at what a sustainability guidance looks at, it gave us the opportunity to expand the brief beyond looking at just environmental sustainability, but through to looking at socioeconomic sustainability as well. A planning officer's role is really exciting. When you want to build a new house, for example, you have to submit those plans, perhaps working with an architect, to a planner. They get to assess your new home in context of other people who might be looking at building new homes. If 200 new homes might be coming in a place, they might decide that, well, a school is now needed because we're having so many more people. Um, if a school is needed, therefore, there might now be the opportunity for a park that is nearby to all these schools. It's really important to include green spaces in our designs for two main reasons. One is human activity. The fact that we can walk, cycle, become far healthier. The second is critical and it's biodiversity. So for example, moths and butterflies get to move through green infrastructure. And if that green infrastructure or if those trees or those hedgerows are stopped at a particular point, it means they're not able to safely reach their habitat. We know that when we're able to pedestrianize our high streets, when we're able to walk or cycle to our high streets, the economic activity of those high streets are increased because we're more likely to dot in between shops. Um, we're more likely to sit down and meet friends for um, coffee, for example, rather than driving through. Air pollution has to be taken seriously and therefore thinking about how we drive in and around cities is critical. This meant creating sustainable transport corridors for people to drive up to and then have their last mile by walking or cycling. It's really important to design places that aren't car dominated. It gives us the opportunity to walk and cycle, but critically the opportunity to design natural surveillance. Natural surveillance is really important in our communities because homes that overlook pedestrianized areas means that women and children who tend to do a lot of the walking always feel that they are safe. It is our collective responsibility to live sustainably. We look really far ahead when we're um, thinking about the future of places. We're thinking 20, 30, 50, 100 years into the future as much as we can. It is the government's responsibility to ensure that our policies and our standards are high enough that mean that we as humans, as beings, are insulated from the challenges that come from climate change. So that was Tara with how environmental, economic and social sustainability are all dependent on each other. 